Welcome to this edition of Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and today I have the pleasure of being here with Nancy Hines Glazer, who is the host and producer of two shows here on Soma TV. Well, the first one is Meet the Artist, and the second one is um, All Art All the Time. So we're going to talk a little bit with Nancy today. Thank you so much for being here, Nancy. You bet. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I wanted to ask you about your first show, which is Meet the Artist. That's the one that has been on the longest, is yes. that correct? Okay. When did you start Meet the Artist? About 14 years ago, 1998. Um, I proposed doing a show, um, a theater interview program, and they said, we have a program. It's really primarily about the visual artists, but you can include theater in that. And I said, well, I could do that. And I had been in theater at that point for some time. I'm married to an art teacher and love art and collect art, so I can do that. In fact, I'll be sort of everybody. I'll be the every man. <laughs> and that'll be all right, uh, because I'll bring to it a different perspective than one that may be more technical. So I started that about uh, 14 years ago. and. About two years ago or so, I began All Art All the Time, which is out in the field. There are shorts out in the field. So. Okay, so Meet the Artist, is that basically you focus on a like one artist, or how how is that different from All Art All the Time? Can you explain like, what sure. the Sure, well, I wanted to be able to do shorter versions of something similar. I didn't want to feel restricted to only doing in-studio shoots, which has great points because you have audio control and generally lighting, uh, it's more structured environment, but I wanted to take it sort of out there and feature some of the events or exhibits or people that were at them and focusing not only on the artist but the public's reaction to the art. And, and whether it's theater or visual arts or music, uh, that's really why I wanted to take it on the road a little bit. Okay. And so I, we expanded, and it fits. I do two shorts within one time slot. So we worked it out, and I found a wonderful editor and that's a couple great. of volunteers around here who love the shows and love the art, and that's how that started. And, you know, it's really limitless. The possibilities are endless of what you could do with our art because there's so much. So, uh, so getting back to the mm -hmm. initial show you had, Meet yeah. the Artist, how so it sounds like it there was some uh a similar or maybe the same show that was already in existence or was it a completely new show and it was a brand new show they had a producer at someone who was going to be the host who backed out so they had oh, an approved show and were looking for a host and um, then the producer also backed out and so i began to do both and um really i haven't run out yet of subject matter. So, so how, do you how do you decide on who you, like who, first of all, do you focus on a certain medium like oil or sculpture or or are you just interested in all types of All art? of it. I really? mean, and that's why it's all art all the time too because it doesn't matter to me because it's all great. It's what builds our culture. It's what separates us from the animals, if you will. It really, to me, and I began to see it differently once I got used to being not happy with how I looked on camera. And I once I just realized that it was the greatest opportunity I had to, in a concentrated time to interview people about what they do and why they do it and their inspiration and have it be shared with the local community. I just realized how lucky I was. And that's really, so I don't focus on any particular subject or medium or, it's just all art is fabulous. And um, that's really how I do it. So if there's an event coming up, I might want to highlight that. For instance, the Artist Studio Tour is coming up. Um, 
I think last year I had nine people in the studio at one time to talk about it, maybe too many. <laughs> uh, but you know, sometimes you got to push the limit too. Um, I've had one-on-one, -on -one, I've had groups, I've had the galleries, representatives from each of our galleries, and it just kind of depends on how the spirit moves me and who's available and <laughs> what's timely. And we gave up doing event shows per se because time is a challenge. But did I answer your question or yes, did I go you crazy? Did. Yes, okay. you, you did a great job. And <laughs> okay. I do want to go back to, you said that there is an artist tour coming up. So yeah. for people who would be interested in going to that, can you explain when it is and what it's about? There, the two towns, Soma, uh, Studio Tour Soma, which is South Orange and Maplewood Artist Studio Tour, is coming up and I believe the date is June 5th. Um, and it's uh, usually from 11 or 12 till 4 and People come from all over to visit our artists' homes. They open their studios, actually do some painting or in-process work, but they get to talk about their work and share their studio. When other artists get to get a chance to see how someone else's studio is set up, and it's really a remarkable tourist straw for the area, um, and it's just exciting. And I usually go every year, and um, this year I'm going to go and take photographs oh, uh, again because that's my favorite um, and it's just a wonderful opportunity for our community to shine now, uh, which we we are both towns shine and in, in my mind's eye but the artists are in particular so gracious do, really. you, do you have any idea like how many artists are going to open up their home oh, heavens I it's usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 Wow so oh. the only the hardest thing is to choose and I've had people ask me, and I can always say, gee, I don't even know what to say. Well, how much time do you have, and what do you like? You know, do you like abstract or, you know, more realistic work? And then try to guide them. But it's, it's almost impossible. And um, I just think it's the greatest thing we have going on here. And that's been going on, gosh, I think it's the eighth year. Maybe it's the ninth year. Wow, okay. So uh, it's, but it's truly amazing. So. So it's the artist tour. It's June fifth, and uh, how can people find out about it? Ah, uh, studio www.studiotoursoma. Okay. And awesome. uh, they can dot org, and the artist's work is featured. Uh, some photos, in fact, maybe even one or two I've taken through the years will be awesome. on the site, uh, and it's just exciting, and the artists get to do this sort of in a more formal way, right? Uh, but in their own place. That's cool. Great. Yeah, it's wonderful. And you mentioned you just let it slip that there may be a few photos that you've taken. So I just so. yeah, I've just taken hundreds and hundreds of photos really? through the years. Yeah. So that is is that your preferred form um, of it's art? It's all self-taught. If I had to say there was uh, preferred art, it would be that. It's also video storytelling. I really enjoy oh. that piece, telling a story, weaving together photos and stills with music and no words. Um, and I produced the movie Once Upon a Gaslight, which was a four-year labor of love with 100 volunteers, uh, the history of town, of and South Orange. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and if someone wanted to see that, where would they be able to find it? And they can look on the uh, Soma Television website. I think it's available there. It's also on YouTube. And if you just Google www Once Upon a Gaslight, up comes the movie. Is it also in the library? Is it it's in the library. It's in the okay. South Orange Library, Seton Hall Library. And I think at one point it was being used to teach local history to kids. So wow. here in, in our school district as well. I don't know if it still is. It's out of print. It was done in 05. So, uh, but that was the other thing. And that came from doing the show. Okay. I got stimulated in the, and interested in people's stories. And that came directly from doing the show. So if anybody wants to volunteer and produce shows, but really work hard at it. Right. You can't just want to do a show. You've got to really work hard at it. Any any of the long-term producers will say it. It's a great place to find other ways to go. Right. So when you were on my show, we talked about finding other ways. That's and true. That's true. Um, I also wanted to ask you, so you, you regarding Meet the Artist, which mm -hmm. is your longest show, uh, do you have any favorites? Do you have any? I hate to I hate to put you on the yeah, spot, but I, I'm I, curious I, about. Yeah. If you know, I've had a few fun ones. I know that Russell Christian made me walk off the set with him. I just got inspired because he's so kooky. Um, no, and wait, of course, for those of well, us who he, haven't he's a, he's a Brit. 
Uh, and he's just funny, and he's he's got an interesting sense of humor. Um, and so he was wearing a bowler hat, I think it was, and I just felt like walking off the set. <laughs> and I've never done that before. So that was kind of uh, lifted me up to an improv moment. I always love our gallery uh, people, our principals in both the Piero Gallery and also Gallery 1978 and wherever they might be. Um, they're always wonderful because they're bringing such remarkable shows to the public. Mm -hmm. um, and really, to, and I think probably one of my earlier shows, Lenny Pirro was a favorite guest of mine because um, he really believed in what I was doing. So, And he's not with us now, but through doing the show and having him on, I did do a, a commemorative piece on him, a short, and it wove together the story of Tony Smith the world-famous architect and sculptor whose uh, sculpture Tao is in our park. Oh, yeah. And uh, he always, Lenny had a dream of us having a sculpture. The, one of the most famous sculptors in the world was born and raised in South Orange, and many people didn't know it. And that was his dream, and so his wife and the Lenny Pure Memorial Arts Foundation uh, worked with the town, and it was obtained. And to me, it's really remarkable. Uh, to have seen that happen. But you know, art in its very nature is controversial. So uh, that had its controversy, and a lot of art does. But you know, one image can change the whole course of history. If you remember the illustration, and I think it was a Wall Street Journal of the prison at Abu Ghraib, yeah. changed everything, changed the whole course of history. So anyway, that's why art is so important to me. Uh, and has it always been that way for you? I, mean, I married an art teacher of 40, he's teaching class, uh, art class for 41 years. And it was in my soul, I just never really knew it. Um, I'm a nurse and a rehab counselor, so who knew? But this is really what feeds my soul. Uh, and that's so that's interesting because that is very different if you are a nurse and you know, now that you enjoy art. I, well, actually, I can see you appreciating art, but to take it to the extent that you actually uh, do shows and you, not just one show, but two, that takes a lot. I, I know that it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of planning, which gets me to my next question. How do you find that? Like in the beginning, how did you find people to come on your show? Word of mouth, asking around, being alert, going to openings, finding work that interested me having other artists tell me, oh, there's somebody really cool, you should have them on, because in, you know, young and old, and I got into the aging artist as well, and, and the power of art to um, impact longevity. That was one of the things that I found most interesting, too, is having a reason every day to go to a studio like Fran Wilner or Florence Went. It's one of my friend Florence's pieces. Um, I saw the power in another way. And, and you mentioned the aging artists. Can yeah. you? So you mean people who have who have started um, producing art at, when they're older, or just both, who? both early and later, and uh, the power of it to heal and uplift and transform and educate and inform and all the things that are important to me about being here uh, okay. and living. Anyway, that's just, that's wonderful because I don't think you know when I, whenever I think about art and I think a lot of other people think about art um, they think about the most current the mo the trendiest the the art that's right in your face what I, I what I like about your show and what I like about the artists that you uh, represent you represent the entire spectrum you have. Um, at least from the shows that I've seen, you've had people who are less abled, you have people who, like you said, are older people, you know, you have the whole gamut. Um, if you, Now that you have been doing this for, you know, actually, I'm gonna save this question okay. until the second half. You we, bet. I'll, you know, this is Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm here, I had the pleasure of being here with Nancy Hines Glazer, um, who is, um, the host and the producer of Meet the Artist and All Art All the Time, and we're gonna be back in a few moments. Television is a powerful and influential medium that allows different groups the opportunity to produce programming that directly affects their own communities. Public, educational, and government access channels ensure that all people, regardless of race, age, gender, disability, religion, or economic status, have access to local government information and the use of a public communication forum. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. here 
here with Nancy Hines Glazer, who is the host and producer of two shows here on Soma Television, Meet the Artist and All Art All the Time. So before we left for the break, I was just about to ask you, um, basically, since you've been doing, uh, since you've been interviewing people and you have a lot of experience in art, um, have you ever thought about, other than just the photography, have you ever thought about doing art yourself? Um, video, video storytelling when you don't have any video skills is always interesting. I just work <laughs> around wonderfully talented and giving and also interested people in the stories I'm telling. And um, I won an art contest in the eighth grade and beat out my friend Erica Radich and no one has gotten over it. <laughs> I was a painter but I got into college and took some art classes and said, you know, I don't know, that upside down cigarette thing that was going on, the pop art at the time, I think Andy Warhol was big, that's how old I am. Um, I said, I think maybe that's not my field. And I got discouraged a bit, but um, I went into theater in 19, now I have to really think about this, probably 83, okay. to learn how to read in front of people because I was very insecure. And then I got bitten by the bug, so I did almost 22 years of theater also. Really? And that's really what helped me want to do the interviewing, is I met, so it was always the last few years. I had one year as an ingenue, uh, <clears throat> as an ingenue, and the rest of it I played grandmother. So I was typecast really from age 28 on as a grandmother, and it's because I had the physicality, and at first I was annoyed, and then I realized that's not so bad, and so then it was me and the kids, so it was always me as the grandmother and all these young people in some obscure theater in New York, uh, so far off Broadway, I was under it, as I say, but <laughs> I enjoyed it, and it was through that that I got the richness of the people I was acting with, and that's that, I think, became part of why it was comfortable for me sitting in your chair. Is you, it's all part of a show, you know, it's all part of uh, working together and sharing. So you were completely comfortable talking. Uh, I, I did not know that you were an actress. Do you still do any acting? No. no, oh no, gave that up a while ago, can't remember <laughs> lines. I think that, the, also the wisdom is knowing when it's time to leave something. And, and when you were on my show, you were talking about that always kind of weaving the story a little bit ahead of it, staying focused and trying to do that. And so um, that's really, I think it's knowing when it's time to leave and find the next adventure. So uh, it's been a wonderful ride though, I tell you that. And we have so many artists around here, my goodness, this show could go on forever. And, and I, my, my hope is that the art piece of it continues for many, many years to come because it's so fulfilling. I actually have people watch and I had my 84-year-old friend used to watch and tell me to fix my hair. But, you know, go, go for a dye job. But she was my fan and she really did care and she, she got something out of it that she never would have, she met people by watching that she never would have met in her age group. So how fun is that? But anyway, That's a visual artist I'm not. I'm married to one. Okay. And this is one of his students' wonderful works. Uh, That's his beautiful. His name is Noel Glazer. He's my art hero. Okay. Because uh, he's been at it for 41 years. And, you know, I think really the role we serve in this chair is one of teacher. You actually end up teaching and by sharing your teaching. And um, there, I have always felt that those who can't teach do instead of the other way. It's powerful. Mm, it's a powerful position to be in your chair. But anyway, I enough said. But um, I don't do painting well. I sure admire it. I love encaustic work. Haven't oh, I think maybe beautiful. if I tried anything, I would try that. And I did try pottery for about two weeks. <laughs> and anyway, so, but uh, my sustaining artistic endeavor has to do with people okay. and how wonderful they are, truly. I, I agree. As creations agree. of art, actually. Yes, so I definitely agree um, that we are here to tell a story. And I think your show, both of your shows do a wonderful job of telling the story. Now, I've been focusing, focusing a lot on the physical, tangible art, but you also 
uh, you also do tapings of actually programs, meaning like the theater and things like that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and why you decided to go in that direction or was this just all part of your grand scheme? All part of it because one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. Um, taping some of the important programs we have in community here like the Interfaith Holocaust Committee and Martin Luther King events and it's all part of weaving who we are as community and as culture and it's art even though I just am not a great videographer I want to be um, but it's really about pulling things together in all their many forms that make us human that is amazing to me. And when you see people telling a story about growing up here at a time when it was not diverse mm -hmm. um, and the work that had to be done, um, you begin to appreciate the community's depth. Um, and then the art is such a vital piece of it. Um, in we moved here in 1979, there was really barely a movement beginning. And then of course the Piero Mm -hmm. Gallery and then Gallery 1978, Lenny Pirro and Judy Wickich and Susan Napak and the countless artists who really pulled the core together to develop the community is what I caught wind of. I just figured I was the luckiest person I could imagine to be able to have all these people to interview. I didn't have to go looking very far. So, But anyway, that is, to me, art builds pretty much everything. And, and oh, Nettie Thomas. Forney Thomas, who's also an artist, uh, filled out my list for me. I said, art builds friends, art builds neighborhoods, art builds communities, art builds culture, and she said, and art builds character. And I really feel that art is such a powerful tool for building, and we've done so much destroying as humans. So that's really kind of my mission and why I've taken it where I have. You've done a wonderful job, and you've done a very in-depth job. If you had to look back and like since 1998 when you started mm -hmm. Meet the Artist, what is something that you did not expect to come of this? Like what is something that, uh, that surprised you about this? I think making the movie. I, I woke up mm. in the middle of the night and said, well, if David Hartman can make a video of Brooklyn, why can't we make one here? And I really almost wish I hadn't had that thought. <laughs> You know, but it was a bolt from the blue, and it was a lot of pain. It was four years of, of a real difficult time. Um, but I look at all the people I met from the doing. Right. It was from the doing. Um, so I never would have met them. I never would have met some of the elders in this community um, and some of the people of different nationalities and backgrounds, you know. Um, and, and so that was an unexpected. And, again, that came directly from doing the show. Okay. So, um, and, and I suppose that's it, just the uh, doors that open to people. Now, uh, as you're telling me about all of the different projects and the, and the two shows that you've done, it occurs to me that it takes a special type of person to even uh, try to do this. So, a little while ago you mentioned, well, I'm not the best videographer. However, you still go ahead and do it. Why? Why? Uh, you said you were not. Tra you're a nurse by trade. Yeah. Um, you weren't trained, and you were. You did theater, um, but you are not a journalism major. Any of these things that people would typically think of as when they're thinking of a host, a producer. What made you think you could do this, Nancy? Oh heck, I don't know. I just figured I cared enough, and. Uh, if I was sincere, people would respond, and that's been truthful. Uh, and that I liked it so much that I, why not give it a whirl? And I think that's the one thing that you mentioned on my show, too, is that why not? Um, not to think that I could do it better than anyone else, but at least it's good. And what fun. Yeah. And isn't life really to... We have so many things to work through in our life as humans that really you just got to have fun so to me it was kind of good clean fun and learning how to do the video I'm still learning and I've been doing it a long time and that's okay it's called lifelong learning um, I'm not a techno person and that's all right um, doesn't make me bad no I'll that's... just keep learning so let's see if that's the other thing about art and and the older person 
you always have something more to do and more to create. And as long as you do, you have drive and you stay alive and you're vital and you're involved. Uh, that, that's probably the second thing I learned uh, is that if you just really put your heart and soul into it, you know, something good's going to come of it. As long as you're, you're pretty much pure right here, it's going to come out good, even if it's bad. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> did I answer have, your question? Yes, you did. Okay. And you know, the other thing that you mentioned is that when you started the shows and people were very interested in being on your show, but you even mentioned that you were fortunate enough to attract people who wanted to help you as far as the editing, the taping. So for someone who is, is, does not have this as her specific education, that's pretty impressive that you were able to produce uh, uh, a product that was at such a level that people were like, yeah, I'll help you. You know, I'll, I'll be on your show. I'll help you edit. I'll help you, you know, with the, with the videotaping, whatever. So I think that's also, that also speaks to your first comment, which is just try it. Just try you know? it. And, you know, there's people who are just game. They want to, they're up for it. They want to be challenged. And even artists who don't like to talk about themselves, come on and, Oh, one or two don't want to, but they came on anyway because what the heck? <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, thank you for saying it took something special. I don't think it took anything special. Really, all it took is being willing. But I think that that is it. I mean, I think there are a lot of people who may be looking at this uh, show and may think, well, I can't. I think you basically have proven to them that you don't need the, the particular background in art uh, history. You don't need to be, uh, you don't need to have a BA in journalism, all of these things. All you, it sounds like from what you're saying is that you have to have an interest. You have to have the drive because you can have the interest, but it took something, it took you, uh, you had to do something in order to actually have the show on the air. You know what I mean? So that, I think that's, that's a great lesson to, to share with people out here. I want to say one last thing. When I first started here 14 years ago, I learned how to use the cameras. I still don't know how to use them, but I think <laughs> it's it's a viable way for people to uh, learn a new skill. Volunteering is always fabulous, and we could always use more right here in the studio. And young people, old people, you get to mix it up. It's pretty fun. And I want to thank you for having me on. I really oh, appreciate it. Thank you it. so much for being here. We have about 30 seconds left. left. And do you have anything, you, you talk about art a lot, but is there, are there any words of wisdom that you would just give people in general? Well, since you've yeah, your I mean, I guess in 30 seconds or less, if you're interested in something, chances are pretty good that people out there are. And so just use your own instinct about what you're curious about, and uh, it's going to work. That's it. <laughs> Great. Thank you so Thank you. much for being on the show today. Um, that was Dustin. This is Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I had the pleasure of having Nancy Hines Glazer here, who is the host and producer of two shows here on Soma Television. The first one is Meet the Artist, and the second, well, the second one is All Art All the Time. And you can catch any of those shows on Soma TV. Um, you can catch shows on YouTube, and of course, you can always. Um, catch them on TV as well. Um, thank you so much, Nancy, for being here. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. My Thanks. great pleasure. Thank you. Okay. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time.